Hey folks, Dr. Hagmeyer here today, and I want to talk to you about small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, also known as SIBO, and the connection that SIBO has with thyroid disease. Now, if you know anything about me, perhaps you've watched other videos that I've done, you know that I believe that the gut holds a very important key to the proper health of not only the thyroid, but it also plays a pivotal role in things like uh, focus and mood and concentration and anxiety and depression, blood sugar problems, hormonal imbalances, adrenal fatigue, and so much more. And just to illustrate this, I, I would bet that if you're watching this, a majority of you watching this, if you have thyroid disease, you also suffer with things like belching, bloating, gas, constipation, acid reflux, and some of you might even be suffering with some very, very embarrassing diarrhea. So if you have a thyroid problem, today's video is really going to hit home and really connect some of the different dots that you need to be aware of, okay? If you've never heard of SIBO, SIBO stands for Small Intestinal Bacterial Overgrowth. And what happens with SIBO, Small Intestinal Bacterial Overgrowth, is you develop an overgrowth of bacteria whereby the bacteria in the large intestines kind of migrate up into the small intestines and they take up shop there. And after you eat some sort of starch or carbo carbohydrate or, or sugar, uh, you feel worse. And what happens is they start to give off gas and hydrogen and methane and because these gases can make you feel like someone just pumped you up and just pumped your belly filled with air. And so one of the classic indicators here is if you eat starch or you eat carbohydrates and, or you eat some sort of sugar and you feel worse, you feel bloated, you most likely are suffering with SIBO. Now I'm always telling patients that when it comes to the thyroid or any other chronic health problem that you're struggling with, you need to look at the big picture. Okay, You need to look at all of the symptoms that you're having and see how they're all connected. And I call this connecting the dots. Okay, Don't be short-sighted and think that all of your problems that you're experiencing are simply just coming from your thyroid. And if your doctor could just get you on the right thyroid medication, if you could just get your TSH levels and your T4 levels right, get you on the right cocktail of medications, that you're going to be good as new. That's not how you build health. Okay, One thing I forgot to mention is this. If you suffer with IBS, get your thyroid tested. And if you have thyroid disease, make sure you get tested for SIBO and some of the other GI problems that we've talked about in past videos. Work with someone who understands the relationship between the gut and the thyroid, okay? You're gonna find that there's a lot of holistic doctors out there, they really don't look at the big picture, or they don't test for these things. It's all about connecting the dots. And if you've been suffering for any period of time, it's worth investing in the right kinds of tests so that you can figure out exactly what's wrong with you. The more pieces of the puzzle that you can connect, the easier and faster it's going to be for you to get your life back and feel good again. Okay, So let's dive into some of the causes of SIBO really and why it can be such a huge problem. Number one in terms of why people develop SIBO is that they have low stomach acid. Okay, Low stomach acid can be due to medications. Sometimes it's due to antibiotics that you've been on. If you think about how many uh, antibiotics you've been on over the course of your lifetime, most kids have been on antibiotics for ear infections and respiratory tract infections and sinus infections and uh, having their teeth pulled and you know who knows what other kinds of, of instances or events in your life where you've been put on an antibiotic. But this is a, a surefire way of just disrupting the gut and, and leading to SIBO. Um, another common problem are proton pump inhibitors. Um, one in eight people are on some sort of proton pump inhibitor. They're on Prilosec or Prevacid or some other kind of, of um, uh, acid uh, inhibiting uh, medication. Birth control pills, okay, many times birth control pills will uh, slow down gastric motility. Um, sometimes if you're dealing with an autoimmune disorder that destroys very specialized cells in your, in your gut called the parietal cells that make stomach acid, this can be a potential cause of SIBO. Um, these will all affect something known as the migrating motor complex, okay, and this is like a broom that just kind of sweeps the intestines along. And another common cause behind SIBO deals with the digestive enzymes produced by the pancreas. Okay? Other things like infections, hormone imbalances, obstructions of the ileocecal valve, a valve that, that basically joins the small intestines to the large intestines. Again, these are all things that often need to be ruled out with specialized testing. Now the reason why this is all important is this, is that when you have SIBO, you can't absorb nutrients. And the longer you can't absorb nutrients, so in other words, the longer this process goes on, the more nutrient deprived and the, basically the sicker you become. So what if you're watching this video and you have SIBO, you might be wondering, well, can SIBO be treated naturally? Well, let me kind of 
talk about that for a moment. Traditionally, SIBO is treated with rivaximin and neomycin. And if you do a search about the treatment with these and other antibiotics, you're going to read all about the high success rate that comes along with this. Okay? The problem is, is what you never hear about is the rate of relapse. Okay? And that's the part of the research that somehow always seems to be left out. Okay? If you search long and hard, you'll find studies that actually show a failure rate as high as 60% within a six to nine month follow-up. So that means you have an infection, you go on an antibiotic, perhaps you feel much better, all this bloating and SIBO kind of disappears, you feel good, a couple months go by and all of a sudden you start having all the same symptoms, okay? That's what's called a failure rate and that is in, in a six to nine month post follow-up testing, 60% of people will be reinfected again. When post follow-ups are done at 12 to 16 months later, I would bet that that failure rate goes up to 80 or 90 percent and that's when a lot of people contact our office. So most people who have SIBO have it because of years of antibiotics, years of pain medications, years of birth control pills, years of a poor diet, and all the things we've already talked about in a video that I did uh, titled Causes of Intestinal Dysbiosis. And so if you haven't watched that video, I'd encourage you to go back, watch that, okay? Because if you treat SIBO with antibiotics, realize that you're treating a problem with the same mentality that most likely caused it in the first place. So how do you treat SIBO naturally, okay? Well, the first thing you need to do is you need to understand that each case or each person that, that is suffering with SIBO is different, okay? You can have 10 people all with a diagnosis of SIBO. They can all have an infection in their gut. And each one of these may have a different mechanism or a cause as to why they developed it. The ending point is obviously SIBO. But what was the starting point and what were the aggravating factors all along the way that ultimately led to SIBO, okay? You have to realize is that when you choose a doctor to work with, you need to find a doctor who's going to be a detective, okay? And the number one question that you should always ask or that your doctor should always ask is, why do you have SIBO in the first place, okay? Let's consider the person who has SIBO because years and years of acid-stopping medications. So in this person, you're going to need to uncover why they were put on antacids in the first place. Is it really a problem of too much acid, like you're told, or is it really a problem that you're not producing enough acid and the food that is, you're eating is fermenting and rotting in your belly? If this is the case, someone might consider various digestive enzymes to support their body in the digestive process. If the person was put on antacids because of, let's say, an H. pylori infection, then whoever you work with may want to implement a 4R protocol where they're focusing on changing, eradicating the, the infection, uh, changing the environment of the gut, supporting it with a variety of different anti-inflammatories and, and going through a whole process and a recovery process of healing the gut. Um, another thing to consider is what about the person that has SIBO because of years of antibiotics and now they have complicating co-infections like parasites, they have candida, maybe they have a leaky gut. Well, this person may opt to choose to take natural antimicrobials, antiparasitics, and do things that now promote the healing of the gut and repair that leaky gut. In some cases, that can take up to 12 to 18 months, okay? Don't think like some of the people out there that I've seen talk about healing a leaky gut. They talk about healing a leaky gut in as little as three months or 30 days. Folks, I can tell you that doesn't happen, okay? And I know because I specifically test people for that, okay? So for people that do have SIBO and they do want to take a natural approach, things like oregano oil, berberine, garlic, green tea, black walnut husk, wormwood, caprylic acid, glutamine, proteolytic enzymes, cat's claw, these are all things that can be just of tremendous help. Certain foods will also need to be eliminated, okay? So again, this is where I think a lot of cases of SIBO just fail. Um, you find out a patient has SIBO and all you do is you, you eradicate the infection, but yet if the underlying cause of that is either A, because of a food sensitivity that might be promoting this, you have to identify what that's, that certain food sensitivity is going to be. You can't just eradicate it with antibiotics, okay? So as you can see here, or hopefully you can see here, uh, maybe you, know, you have SIBO and maybe you've relapsed and so you're wondering, geez, this makes a lot of sense, right? You have to realize that there is no cookie cutter recipe book protocol here. And I know as you search the internet, you probably hear of, of different uh, you know, recipes that you can follow in terms of what type of medications to take. It doesn't work like that. You're bound to have a relapse, okay? You need to be tested, and again, you need to know the why, okay? If you know why, 
then you can be the most effective with treatment that's going to be aimed and geared towards uh, whatever your particular cause of your problem is. Okay. Now, I want to say something real quickly, just a word of caution here. Not all natural antimicrobials are completely safe. Okay. Certain supplements and herbs can also affect and disrupt the microflora of the gut. So don't think for a moment that just because it's natural, it's not powerful. I've seen many, many patients over the years make themselves very, very sick because they didn't understand how to properly use these natural agents. They didn't pulse them at the right time, or maybe they took them for too long, or maybe they didn't take them long enough, and so the infection grew back, okay? From a dietary point of view, you'll want to follow a low-carbohydrate diet, okay? The more carbs you feed your belly, the more you're feeding the bacteria. And for this reason, I like some modified form of either a FODMAPS diet, an SCD diet, or a paleo diet, okay? If you visit my website, drhagmar.com, do a search on FODMAPS uh, so you can see the kinds of foods you'll need to eliminate. Many cases of, of um, an autoimmune protocol or an autoimmune diet is also extremely beneficial. It takes out all the stuff that, that's basically just making you sick. And so that also can be found on my website. So we've unpacked a lot of information here on SIBO, its connection to the thyroid, but I, I hope also that I impressed upon you why you don't want to follow some cookie cutter recipe on how to eliminate SIBO that you just found on the internet. If you want information or you want more information on SIBO, I specifically did a, a five-part video series titled Everything You Want to Know About SIBO. And we're going to go into so much more detail there about the testing, the kinds of testing, what uh, perhaps maybe you had some SIBO testing done, what those tests indicate. And so again, if you want to see that video series, head over to my website, um, drhagmeyer.com. In the search bar, type in SIBO or even in Google, just do Dr. Hagmeyer SIBO. Watch that video course. Um, important things to remember is that you can get better, all right? That, that's the, the, the short of the story is you can get better. You can treat this naturally. You don't always have to rely on, on very powerful um, antibiotics to, to kind of overcome whatever's going on in your gut, okay? So keep digging, and until next time, take care.